Okay, so today we're going to talk about this fantastic little puzzle. It's called the 15 puzzle. And you can see it's a tray with 15 little squares, each numbered 1 through 15, and one blank so we can move the squares around. Let's say we want to get these in order. So I'm going to move these around. I've got 1, 2, 3 already. And then the third row should have 9, 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14, 15. Oh, you're good at that. So there we go. We can only make moves where we switch one tile with the empty spot. So I can't switch this one and that one, for example, because there's no blank to move them around in. What we want to talk about with this puzzle is some of the mathematics behind it. So we went out yesterday and found some uh, examples of these puzzles that you could buy in the stores around here. And we found something very interesting on the back of the package. It shows you some of the patterns that you might try and arrange the tiles in. So the one that we just did was 1 through 15. Here this one has 1, 2, 3, 4 in vertical lines rather than horizontal. You might want to do evens and odds. The various possibilities you could come up with including a natural one you might try and do, which instead of going from 1 to 15, goes from 15 down to 1, so in reverse order. But this is very curious. Try as you might, you will never be able to do this arrangement. So how it ended up on the back of this package is a real mystery, but uh, that's the mystery that we want to um, explain today. So that's like they're giving people this impossible task. It seems like it. Uh, I don't know what they were thinking. Did you play this game when you were a boy? I had several versions of it, including the standard ones like this. I also had some versions that, instead of having numbers, had pictures. I had one that uh, had a map of the world and the, the object was to you know, recreate the map of the world. But yes, I, I certainly wasted more time than I should have on these puzzles. It was invented in around the 1870s. A famous American puzzle maker named Sam Lloyd claimed that he had invented it, but apparently that's not the case. But what he did do in around the early 1870s was he issued a challenge to the public and he offered a thousand dollars to anybody who could uh, accomplish this. So his challenge was to, to take the 15 puzzle in the arrangement where the numbers are in order 1 through 15 and rearrange it so that 14 and 15 are switched. He offered a thousand dollars for this but the sneaky thing about this is that this is also an impossible arrangement. But this caused an absolute uh, national frenzy. Everybody was involved in trying to do this. A serious mathematics research journal called the American Journal of Mathematics published a paper called Notes on the 15 Puzzle. And what the editor said was, the 15 puzzle for the last few weeks has been prominently before the American public and may safely be said to have engaged the attention of nine out of 10 persons of both sexes and of all ages and conditions of the community. And then he goes on to say that uh, this wouldn't have uh, been enough to persuade them to publish a paper on this, but they felt that it was a chance to uh, educate the public on some important mathematical concepts. So th they were jumping on the bandwagon. Actually, this paper is two short notes, one proving that some of the configurations are impossible and the other saying exactly which ones were possible. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is we have to convert this puzzle into some mathematical language so that we can use uh, the tools of mathematics to, to figure out what's going on. So let's first of all just make all of these things on, sort of put them all on the same footing. So let's think of the blank square as the number 16. So now we've got the numbers 1 through 16 in some order. So we're going to focus on those lists of numbers. So each arrangement of the tiles we're going to think of as some arrangement of the numbers from 1 to 16. Every time we have a pattern in our puzzle, I'm going to write down the list of numbers 1 through 16 in the order that they appear in the tray. So for example, this arrangement would give me the list 5, 1, 3, remember the blank is 16, then 9, 2, 6, 4, 13, 10, 7, 8, 14, 15, 12, 11. So it's the same set of numbers, 1 through 16, just written in a different order. In mathematics, that sort of thing is called a permutation. In our case, it's of the numbers from 1 
all the way up to 16. At this point, I would have assumed every permutation is possible. If you, if you juggle them around enough times, you can list the numbers in any order. Right, that would be a reasonable assumption. And if that was possible, anything on the back of this package would have been fair game. But so what we're going to have to show is that uh, among all the permutations, there are some which have one property which is good for us and one which have a different property which is bad for us. And we're going to use uh, this uh, property that we will identify as a way to distinguish the possible from the impossible. So let's think about what the sliding move that we can do is doing to the permutation. So when we slide a piece, we're swapping the blank square from where it is to where the piece we slid into it came from. 16. So 16 and 4 have switched places if I make that move. If I made that move, the blank and 3 have switched. So 16 and 3 have switched. So the moves we're allowed correspond to switching one number with just one other. In our case, in the moves from the here, we can always switch 16 with something else. Let's just say x. And I'm going to write it like that. When I write a pair, this means switch 16 with x. If I do that, I obviously get a new permutation. So we've now translated our puzzle into the mathematical problem, starting from one configuration, get to another configuration by doing switches like this. These are called transpositions. So now that we've translated it into mathematics, we get to use everything that mathematicians have learned about uh, permutations and transpositions. And there are a couple of crucial facts that we need to use. So the first fact, we can convert the permutation that we start with, everything in order, into any other permutation of the same numbers using only transpositions. So you're including the impossible ones at this point. At this point, those impossible configurations are within our reach. True. If we're free from the constraints of the puzzle um, and are only dealing with the permutations, then we can convert uh, any one into any other by these. All right, simple example with the permutations just of one, two, three. And let's suppose we want to end up with three, one, two. So how can we convert one, two, three into three, one, two? We could first get three into the place that we wanted to go by switching three and one. So we make the transposition 1, 3. That will turn this into 3, 2, 1. We haven't done anything to 2, but we've switched 1 and 3. And now I get the 1 into place. So now I switch the 1 and the 2. And there we are. From there to there by two permutations. If you have longer set of numbers, then you might need more. But um, that's the idea that by any, you can get from any one to any other just by switching two at a time. So fact two addresses the fact that there's more than one way to get from one to another. Any, we can always do it by transpositions. But for example, in the case of these two permutations, I could have done something different. Okay, now let me show you a longer one. Again, going from one, two, three to three, one, two. First, switch the one. And now let me move three over by switching it first with one and then with two. And now I still have to get one and two into the right place. So that will take one more switch, switching one and two, that will put this into the right place. So now I've got a chain going from one, two, three to three, one, two, that involves one, two, three, four steps. Whereas in our original example, we have only two steps. Oh, can you show me a three-step example? I cannot <laughs> because of fact two. And fact two says that even though there are many ways to get from one permutation to another, they don't have to involve the same number of steps. But if one path involves an even number of steps, then all paths have to have an even number of steps. So the number is not fixed but the parity, whether it's even or odd, 
is fixed. So it could have been odd as there are like with some numbers it will be odd as well but. Right for, between some peer mutations so for example if this was the way we wanted to end up if we wanted to go from one to three to three to one then I would have only need one step. So I could have. Or three steps. Or three steps. Or five steps. Or five steps. <laughs> So the fact number two, the number of steps required is not fixed, but the parity of that number, whether it's even or odd, is fixed. I'm taking your word for that. That's like, that's like a proven thing. Right. That's, that's, we're taking these as facts. Uh, that, uh, and not just not, not just because we want them to be. These are proven facts. Right, right. These are, you, you might even call them theorems about permutations. So like in the example we did, we had one path that had two steps and one that had four. The number was different, but both were even. And I could try until the end of the universe to, to do th three and I wouldn't, I wouldn't find it. You wouldn't find it. Yeah. Or uh, five or seven or nine even if I was like duplicating my steps and things. Right, uh, you could uh, right. You could have a, a sequence where you just went round and round in a loop for a while and then cut out of the loop and made progress. That would add a lot of unnecessary steps, but it wouldn't change the parity of the number of steps. So what this means is that um, starting from the numbers in order, Every other permutation is reached either by an even number of steps or an odd number of steps. Another way of saying that is we can attach to each permutation a thing that we might call an invariant of the permutation, that is the parity of the number of steps needed to get to it from the starting configuration. Now that we know that all permutations are either even or odd, we will see that the impossible ones have the wrong parity. When we go back to our puzzle and we want to know which configurations are possible and which are impossible, we're going to use this relation to even and odd permutations and we'll see that if the arrangement corresponds to a permutation with the wrong parity, then we'll never be able to get to it. One extra consideration we have to bring in is we have to look at where the blank space, the number 16 in our permutations, starts and ends. So like for example, if we wanted to start with the pieces all in horizontal row, let's suppose we wanted to get to the vertical arrangement. So here we see that in this vertical arrangement we're going to end up with the blank square again at the bottom there. So if we start and end with the number 16 or in puzzle language the blank square starting in the bottom right corner and ending in the same place. What's going to happen between start and finish is that the blank square is going to move all around the tray as we make our switching. So here I'll start it. We want to get to the ending configuration so we have to move the blank square all around so that I can rearrange the numbers. Keep your eye on the blank square. You can see it's moving all over the board and we will just keep moving the blank square around until the pieces do what we want, etc. So let's count how many times we have to move the blank. That will be the number of transpositions we have to do. So you might think this is an impossible thing. I mean, there's going to be maybe dozens, maybe hundreds of moves that we have to make. But remember, all that we care about is the parity of the number of moves. And if we think about what's going to happen to this blank square, if it's going to start here and end up at the same place. So let's suppose that when we're doing this, we make a certain number of moves to the left, a certain number of moves to the right, a certain number of moves up, and a certain number of moves down. If we're going to end up at the same place, we have to make as many left as right, because if every time we move left, we'll have to compensate if we're going to end up at, back at the same place. And the same with up and down. The, the number of ups will have to equal the number of downs. So the total number of moves is the total of the lefts and the rights and the ups and the downs, but the lefts and the rights are the same, so I can write that as twice the number of lefts, and there are as many downs as ups, so that's twice the number of ups. So you can see that whatever the number is, it's twice something. It's even. It's even. So yeah. to end up with the blank or the 16 in the bottom right corner, 
Definitely even number of moves. Definitely an even number of moves. So that means if we start from the, this configuration we, and we end up with the blank square in the 16, we can only rearrange this to correspond to an even permutation. All right, so to prove that this one is impossible, all we have to do now is check whether the permutation corresponding to this arrangement is even or odd. If it turns out to be odd, then we know we cannot reach it by these moves. Okay, how do we do that though? That looks like such a complicated thing to show. All right, so let's write out where we want to start from and where we want to get to. So we want to start from this configuration and we want to end in the permutation corresponding to that arrangement. So, so that starts with 15. So 16 is going to end up in the same place but all the other numbers have been rearranged let's construct a sequence of transpositions that is going to take this permutation to that permutation and this is actually not too hard so we have to switch 15 and 1 14 and 2 13 and 3 4 and 12 5 and 11 6 and 10 and 7 and 9 and if you make all those switches, then you'll get 15 first, 14, 13, 12, you'll get it in this order. Of course, you can't make that switch in the puzzle game quite so easily, can you? You can't do it in the puzzle game, but... Without cheating and taking the tiles. Right, but we know that the sequence that you would have to use in the puzzle game would have a different number of steps, but the parity would be the same. So we only have to worry about parity. So if I can show that with this sequence, the parity is wrong, then whatever sequence we could do there would also be wrong. These are the switches that will get us from there to there, and well, how many of them are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, odd. That's enough to tell you that That's it's it. So that means we cannot get from the starting configuration in order to the ending configuration in reverse order with the blank square in the same place. Let's think about Sam Lloyd's original nasty challenge, which was to take the original configuration and end up with a configuration where everything is the same except the last two are switched. So if we analyze this using our math superpowers that we've just acquired, we have to compare our starting configuration, compare this to the configuration where everything is the same, except I've switched these last two tile numbers, and 16 stays the same. How many transpositions do we need to get from the starting one to the ending one? Well, all we need to do is switch 14 and 15. So it's the transposition 14, 15. That's all we need. There's one of them. Odd. So that's odd. But we know from this little argument that we made, if we start with the blank at the lower right and we end with the blank in the same place, 16 at the end, then the number of steps that we have to have performed to get from start to finish has to be even. All right. So there's no way to start there, end there, and do an odd number of steps. So no one so, won the thousand bucks. So no, so Sam Lloyd kept his thousand bucks. So these yeah. other ones that this package says are possible or impossible, we've got to, you, we'd have to check all of them. We don't know which ones of those are possible or not. Right. Let's see if we think it's possible to end up with the arrangement where the numbers go around the board in a spiral. And now we end up with the blank over there. Let's see uh, if this should be possible. So we're starting from the standard starting configuration. So the blank starts in the bottom right. And we want to know, can we end up like this? So what's the parity of the number of steps that it would take to get the blank from starting to its ending position? Well, it started in the bottom right. To get to where it is at the end of this configuration, we have to go move one, two to the left, and one up. So the number of steps has to have the same parity as three. So the fancy math way of writing that is to say that the number of steps has to be 1 mod 2. In other words, odd. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's a very fancy way. Of all right. All right. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. right. Odd as well. Right. right. Odd under it. Right. Right. Okay. Sorry. Unnecessarily. Odd. <laughs> right, odd. Right. Rather okay. than one mod two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's odd. So it's odd. So whether this is possible or not then depends on whether the configuration corresponding to this, which is one, two, three, four, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, five, eleven. Remember, blank is 16, 15, 6, 10, 9, 8, 7. Is that odd? So this one, it's not as easy to draw a map in the same way there, but we can certainly figure out a path from the starting configuration to there, how are we going to do it? So we don't have to do anything about the first four. 12, 13, 14 in the starting configuration are over there. They all have to be moved to come after 1, 2, 3, 4. So we can do that. Let's see, 12 would have to be switched with 11, then 10, then 9, then 8, then 7, then 6, then 5. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 hops. That would put the 12 in front of the 5. Then the 13 can come behind it, another 7 hops. And the 14 behind that, another 7. We can get this much correct. By doing, we had to do 7 hops for the 12, 7 for the 13, and 7 for the 14. So that's going to take 3 times 7 steps. Odd. It was odd hops. Odd, odd number so far. Okay, now 5 is in the right place as well. So we're good up to there. Uh, we have to get 11 into the correct place behind the 5. So that's going to take 5 hops. Now we're good up to 11. Now we need the 16. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, another 6 hops. Now we're good up to there. 15 into its correct position. And that's going to take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 hops. 9, 10. That was another 1. Now we've got 15. 6 happens to be in its right position. So now we've got to just switch the last few. We've got to get 7, 8, 9, 10 into the order 10, 9, 8, 7. Here we can, actually we can short circuit things. We switch those two and those two. That will do the job. So that's another two. That's odd. Don't even need to know the actual number. All we need to know is, is it even or odd. Here we have another 10 steps. That's even. So an even number plus an odd number is odd. Good news, because look up here. Good news, right. Because that's what we wanted. Good news. That's, so, that's gettable then. So let's do it. You can edit this. Mathematics wins. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to make a prediction. The number of people on the YouTube video that write comments saying, oh, I just take the tiles out or I cheat and things like that is going to be odd. <laughs> <laughs> odd but not peculiar. Odd and a lot of them. <laughs> Elements here, which these are not quite tetras because tetras is four squares. These have five. So these are five squares. So these are all the possible ways you can put five squares together. If you were to stop right now, this is area 20. So if you were to stop right now, your score would be 20, that's your biggest, minus your smallest, four, your score would be 16.